society often gets divided from the point of view of religious psychology that some people consider themselves, let's just say they call themselves normal or they call themselves liberal or they call themselves, you know, Muslim, but not too Muslim, right? And then they look at somebody who's practicing even a little bit more than them as too Islamic or too Muslim or they're Muslim, Muslim, et cetera. They get these kind of, or, or mullah or whatever, right? And so they, you, you get inside of a Muslim community those who identify themselves as not too strict and they look at another as too strict. And then we, I already talked to you about the people that do practice. Many of them have very good character and actually embody the teachings of Islam. But many of them are learning Islam as a source of dominance and corruption within themselves. So even those who look like they're religious, look like they're practicing, can, have, can be a pretty bad example. But today, let's turn the tables on those who know even a little bit. They know a little bit. And they look at their behavior and they use that to justify to themselves, you know, all these people with beards and all these women with hijab, they're all extreme. They're all crazy. I want to be nothing like them. I want nothing to do with them. And that's why I don't pray. Or that's why I don't go to the masjid. Or that's why I don't, you know, this all this stuff is extreme. And you know, they may be doing, those people that you're criticizing may be doing something wrong. It's true. But for you and I to use that as an excuse to throw away the rest of Islam and say, none of it applies to me because those people are so messed up, right? And, and why, did, why would they do that? They already know something's just because somebody else is corrupt or not, alcohol is still haram. It didn't become halal because a religious guy is corrupt. Right, it's, what is wrong is still wrong. Whether or not somebody who prays five times, like for example, in my case, I one time I was I was uh, cheated in business, very badly by a hafiz of the Quran. Right, he used to lead the taraweeh prayers, very religious guy. You would look at him and say, "Mashallah," right? You want to pray behind him? Because I was really good, but he cheated like thousands out of me in in a business deal many many years ago. Right? Now I could use that as an excuse to say all these hafiz. I don't want to pray behind any of them. They're all corrupt. Forget it. I'm not even want to memorize the Quran anymore because of this. This Hafiz has scarred me from his. <laughs> no, he hasn't. He's messed up. That doesn't mean the memorization of the Quran is not noble. That doesn't mean praying in the masjid isn't a, is, isn't a worthy act. So what we what we do is out of my out, what I could do is out of my spite for that person, I can use that as an excuse. They use the expression, throw the baby out with the bathwater. So throw Islam out along with the example of this corrupt Muslim. Right? So now I'm justifying, just abandoning all the teachings of Islam while it's not that I don't know. I already know. I know what I'm doing is haram. I know it. I know what, I, what I'm supposed to do and I'm not doing it on purpose, but I'm using my spite against this person that I don't want to make them feel like I want to be like them. I want nothing to do with them. My spite against them is actually my own baghi. So even though I know this ayah does apply not just to the scholars, but those even who know the basics, and then use that baghi, that animosity, that urge to not be anything like them or give somebody else the upper hand or appear like they're somebody else, like the others they don't like, out of that spite, they don't want to practice any of it. 